And so my wife and I began working there in the days of, of communism. It was in 1990 that I first went to the former Soviet Union in, in Russia and held meetings in Bahana University, held meetings in the Olympic Stadium, held meetings in the uh, Kremlin Auditorium. And I remember developing relationships, really outstanding friendships with many of our Soviet leaders. And as we traveled into the dark Soviet night in those years, preaching in various auditoriums, I, uh, we, they would tell me stories. One of my dear friends was Pastor Mikhail Kulakov. He was the president of our work in the former Soviet Union for many, many years. He stood next to me when I was on the opening night of preaching in the Kremlin when 13,000 people came out to that citadel of communism. It was there in the Kremlin that Andropov spoke, there in the Kremlin that Chernenko spoke, there in the Kremlin that Khrushchev spoke and Gorbachev spoke. And for the first time in history, it was open for an evangelistic meeting. And it was an amazing time. And Pastor Kulikov stood next to me and he was crying. Tears were coming down his face. And I said, Elder, why are you crying? And that old gray-haired man said, Mark, I never dreamed that when I was in prison for five years for my faith, I never dreamed that I would live for this moment. Now, here is Elder Kulikov's story. His father was a Seventh-day Adventist minister. And his father baptized five or six young people in their teens. One of them was a communist plant. And this young man, 17 years old, was planted by the communist government to be baptized so he could come back and report on Pastor Kulikov Sr. Pastor Kulikov Sr. baptized these young people at night in a secret baptism in a river at midnight. And one of the young men went back to the government and he said to him, I was forced and I was coerced beyond my will. And of course it was a lie, it wasn't true. So Pastor Kulikov Sr. was taken to trial. He went to trial for seven days and the fabrication of lies that were brought against him. His family was not allowed in the courtroom. But, but Mikhail Kulikov, his son, who now was 21, who was his assistant pastor, was watching through the door. He was looking at what was taking place in that court. And they sentenced his father to prison in Siberia. After the trial, they took Pastor Kulikov Sr. and put him in a small holding cell. Mikhail Kulikov, his son, 21, 22 years old, knew that he may never see his father again. So he went down to the young man who was guarding the cell, the young Soviet soldier, and he said, look, we're about the same age. Give me five minutes with my father. Give me five minutes with my father. So Pastor Kulikov said, the young Soviet soldier looked one way, then another, and he said, okay, go, talk to your father, five minutes. Pastor Kulikov said, I went into my father, and we embraced, and we just wept and wept and wept. And then he said, my father said to me, keep your eyes on Jesus. And then he said, in the court record, son, they're coming for you next. You'll be arrested and they'll shave off all your hair. But don't worry, it'll grow back. Be faithful, keep looking to Jesus. Within six months, Mikhail, Pastor Kulikov's son, my friend, was arrested. He was sent to the borders of Siberia and he was in prison for five years. When he was released from prison, he was sent to life exile. Now life exile is horrible. It's worse than prison, many ways. Because in prison you may get out after five years. Life exile, it's life exile. So in the former Soviet Union, we have 13 time zones that go across the Soviet Union. And Pastor Kulikov, Mikhail, was sent from the European time zone to the Asiatic time zone. And he was dropped off in a little village. By now he's in his mid-twenties. He does not know one person in that village. He does not speak the language of the villagers. They are ethnically different than he is. He's a young intellectual and he's sent to this village to spend the rest of his life there. He can never leave that village. He's separated from his family, separated from his friends. There are no Seventh-day Adventists there. Now, if you were in that village and you had to spend the rest of your life there and you projected on the image of your mind all of the negative possibilities, I'm going to be here for the rest of my life, 
I know nobody here. There is no future for me here. You can become so depressed and so discouraged. Pastor Kulikov had a few dark days, but he kept looking to Jesus. He kept looking to Jesus. He kept looking to Jesus. He said, Jesus, I don't know the solution. Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, I believe. Jesus, the days are dark. He, he was a German teacher as well, so he's taken into a home, and he was given one little place in the home, and there were three other children to sleep in the bedroom where he slept, and the parents in that home wanted him to teach their children German. After he had been there for a number of months, a nurse visited that village. She saw that he was talented in German. She saw that he was a magnificent artist, and she said, why are you in this village? He said, because I'm in live exile, I can't go anyplace else. She said, I know some of the authorities in a town about 60 miles away from here. And she said, I think I can, I can get you a pass if you're willing to teach at a public school art. We need an art teacher. He said, if you can get me a pass out of this village, I will praise God. <laughs> they worked through the bureaucracy, Soviet bureaucracy, got him a pass. He went to that little village, to that town where he's going to teach art, 60 miles away. He learned that there was a Seventh-day Adventist church not far from that town. And in that church, there was a young woman by the name of Anna. And shortly before he arrived, Anna had a dream. And in that dream, the angel told her, a young Seventh-day Adventist pastor will walk into your church one day. His name is Mikhail Kulikov, and he will be your future husband. <laughs> now, I asked Anna, the first time that Pastor Kulikov walked into the church, did you run and throw your arms around him and say, you'll be my future husband? She said, no, Pastor. <laughs> Eventually, the two married. They had six children, three girls and three boys. All of the boys became Seventh-day Adventist pastors, and all of the girls married Adventist pastors. Pastor Kulikov told me this with a smile on his face and a twinkle in his eyes. The Soviet government arrested me and sent me to life exile to silence my voice, but God sent me there to produce a pastor's factory. <laughs> Praise God! Two places not to look. Don't look too much in your past. It's going to strangle you with guilt of what you didn't do. Look to Jesus who can restore the years. If you're in a situation right now where your future is uncertain, don't be too concerned about the uncertainty of your future, whether it's health or marriage or finances. Certainly, you have to take responsibility and act responsible. That's not my point. But here's what my point is. Do not become obsessed over that which you do not know and cannot control. Because Jesus is greater than those problems. Jesus is greater than those difficulties. Four places not to look. Your past. Your future. Secondly, thirdly, the third place not to look is, is too far within. Now, in Scripture, there is the proper place for self-examination. But unless the Holy Spirit has brought something in your heart up, don't go fishing for it. There are some people that are constantly examining themselves trying to find out how wretched they are. They are. Now let's turn to the Bible. 1 John chapter 3, verse 20. God has called you to live an abundant Christian life. He has not called you to go fishing around in your heart to find out every mistake you ever made, how evil you are, how wretched you are, how weak you are. If God wants to remind you of that, he has the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's going to bring those things up to you. 1 John chapter 3, verse 20. Let's read it together if you've got it. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 20. 
Notice the text. For if, you have it there, 1 John 3, 20. How many of you have it? Raise your hand. 1 John 3, verse 20. Let's read it. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. If, if, if our heart condemns us, do we wallow in that condemnation? If we're weak and frail, do we wander in that weakness? I remember a time I was helping a young man quit smoking. He was about 28 years old. He had smoked for 14 years. He started smoking when he was 14 years old. And I said to him, look, do you really want to quit? Oh, yes, Pastor, I really want to quit. Um, do you believe Jesus can help you? Oh, yes, Pastor, I believe Jesus can help me. Do you believe the Bible? Oh, yes, Pastor, I believe the Bible. Do you believe the Bible when it says I can do all things through Christ? Oh, yes, Pastor. Okay, let's kneel down here. You get all your cigarettes, you bring them here, you put them on the floor. And we'll talk about water, drinking water. We'll talk about fresh air. I'll talk about that. But first, I'm going to talk about Jesus. We're not going to look at your weakness. We're going to look at Jesus. So we kneel down to pray. He begins to pray. I say, you pray first. He says, sure. He begins to pray. Here's his prayer. Oh, dear Lord, I'm so weak. Oh, dear Lord, I, 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 I smoke for 14 years. Dear Lord, I don't think I ever can overcome. Dear Lord, I, you know how frail I am. Dear Lord, dear Lord, those cigarettes are so strong. In my... About halfway through his prayer, I couldn't take it anymore. I shook him. Stop praying. <laughs> You're going to be worse after you prayed than before you prayed. <laughs> now that's the truth. If your prayer focuses on how weak you are rather than how strong Jesus is, you are going to be weaker after your prayer. If you spend 90% of your prayer talking about how wretched you are, how evil you are, God already knows that. What does the text say? For if our heart condemns us, God is what? Greater than our hearts. God is greater than our hearts. I thank God that I serve a God that's greater than my weakness. I thank God that grace is greater than sin. I thank God that whatever challenge I face, he can handle. 